A few months ago, when I was looking at some design ideas for our new Pi compressor, I was studying the circuit information of one of the famous integrated circuit manufacturers and noticed how much effort the designers had put into tiny details of technical accuracy. There's a symmetry about their circuitry. Now this is, this is great for the spec sheets and it's excellent for the sales literature. But when it comes to real life, the world isn't like that. The clever part of my old Joe Meek compressor designs was always that the, the particular feel you get when you're using one. It's because of slightly odd timings of attack and release. Our ears don't work in a very linear way and electronics that work perfectly, like so many of our plugins do, do they tend to sound flat and uninteresting. So I went back to the drawing board <laughs> it's a long time since I've used one of those. I started looking for new ideas to use in the Pi compressor. And while doing that, maybe developing a new single channel compressor. Now, virtually all analog compressors are of the feedback type where you have an audio amplifier and as soon as the audio gets too loud at the output a control voltage is generated which acts to reduce the gain at the amplifier input. Now this is a nice easy sort of self-regulating arrangement. It works well except that it's a bit prone to over compression and overshoot unless the compression attack and release are carefully controlled. The 588 operates differently. It's a feed-forward type where the input signal generates a control current that modifies the gain at the amplifier output. Now that's, that's unusual but not unique. What is unique is the shaping of the compression. This is a, a combination of attack and release characteristics. The practical result is a simple low-cost compressor that introduces life to audio. It improves separation, where conventional compressors tend to muddy up the sound, and it introduces clarity at both the low frequencies and the high frequencies. The first ones I built worked really well, so I carried on the development and turned it into the 588 a single module in the 500 series range. Its controls are kept simple so that it can be used quickly and easily. On the front panel is a red push button and a red LED that lights up when the button is pressed, bringing the 588 into circuit. With the button released, the 588 is completely bypassed, although the compressor is kept in a, in a standby state so that it can be switched in at any time. Volume is controlled by the input gain control. Now, now this is the main control that controls compression. When the compressor is working, the green LED at the bottom of the panel lights. When the amount of compression increases so that the signal is near maximum, the yellow LED at the top of the panel flashes. The setting of the input gain control is critical. It's, it's very easy to turn the control too high and over compress without realising. Compression attack is controlled by a three-way switch. The normal and most useful position is fast. This is where the attack time is a fraction of a millisecond. The other settings are useful where a slightly longer attack time is needed. Compression release is controlled by the release control and like the input gain, this is a critical control. Too short a release can produce an unrealistic snatching effect, while too long a release reduces the punchiness of the compression. For speech, the optimum setting is somewhere close to the minimum setting, a value that's probably about 200 milliseconds. Um, I tend to run it at about 10-2. Um, 
audio output from the 588 is controlled by the Makeup Gain Control. This simply sets the volume level of the output. The transformer input is standard, but there's the option of a transformer output as well if it's needed. How does it sound? Well, this voice track is being recorded using a large diaphragm capacitor mic into a TF Pro 503 mic amp and a TF Pro 588 compressor. And there's a short demo recording on the TF Pro website. Thanks for listening.